What's good, everybody, and welcome to the first ever episode 223 of the Kind of Funny Games cast, where three, sometimes four best friends gather around. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> shit. This table. <laughs> You know what? I was so nervous so I was going to screw this up that, of course, I screwed it up. Uh, I'm Andrea it. Renee, joined by the best hair in the business, Mr. Fran Andy Mirabella. Cor- oh. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> Oh yeah! I Honestly, got a it's kind today. of a it's kind of a three way tie for best hair at I this table a, right I, here. I, I just had a rough night. You can't tell with the hair because it always <laughs> it always looks messy. But yeah. and uh, the best video game journalist in the business, Andy Cortez, is here. What's up, guys? All the scoops, whatever you need to know, let me know. I just Hot realized, scoops and breaking embargoes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just realized that we do shows together sometimes, and we're Frandria. Yes. But if we ever do it, we're Frandy. Now we've got Fr- options. Fr- friend, friend, friend. I know all three. I tried. Friend, very- Andy. Uh, may- maybe. Friend- yeah. Well, I'm cool, Andy. Don't forget. Oh, that's right. What's, what are you? Mm. I don't know. He's actually. just Andy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just Andy. You're just Andy. <laughs> just Andy. Just Andy. Nitro <laughs> rifle is what people call me. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the kind of funny games cast. This is where we talk about video games that we've been playing, and sometimes we discuss deep and meaningful topics around video game culture as well. We want to give a big shout out to our Patreon supporters at the Silver Membership or above. You guys are watching the show live right now as we're recording it, and you get the show three days early with those exclusive pre and post shows. If that sounds like a fun time to you, head on over to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. And another big thank you and shout out to this month's Patreon producers, James Hastings and Mohammed Mohammed. Of course, if you aren't part of our fantastic Patreon community, you can still watch us Mondays at youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and on roosterteeth.com. Plus, you can also search the Kind of Funny Games cast on your favorite podcast service. Hit that follow or subscribe button, and then you'll get to listen to us all the time, wherever you are, at work, wow, it's at like the gym. It's like you've hosted before. While Andrea. you're driving. You're pretty good at this. Oh, thanks, good Andy. At this. I appreciate that. Hastings, by the way. You ever go, you ever go to Hastings? Uh, is that in Minnesota? In Hastings, it's like a store. It was a store back in the day. Very similar mm. to like a Sam Goody. Oh. I don't huh. know if it was like maybe only a Texas only thing. I would have been. Well, really? There's stuff like that. I, I forget. I lived in Cincinnati for a while. There was a store I'm forgetting, but it was only around that area. Got it. It happened. Yeah, it seems ha- like everybody would have Hastings it. was like bookstores, uh, like slash CDs, hmm. slash video games. Maybe it's part of the family like inheritance. Possible. I just Googled Hastings <laughs> store. Yeah, it looks sent- like it. I mean, it looks like a like an entertainment so- store that sells books, because, movies, music, yeah. and video games. Yeah, and they had a. They I think they had snacks there, but then they shut down <laughs> back with the whole recession and stuff. Really sad that stuff. Right. Real Was sad. This stuff. all just because his name is James Hastings. Yeah, it just reminded okay. me of Hastings because I'd go there and like I don't know. It wasn't my favorite place to look for games or right. CDs or whatever because you know I preferred I preferred Walmart. I don't know why. Walmart was like my destination for when I want Lego. Probably because so. you could pick up toilet paper and Legos at the same time. That's true, yeah. But Jeez, also, you those two things also I was like 11, so I wasn't sometimes. super into buying toilet the paper. <laughs> no. I wasn't super into buying toilet paper. What are we no. talking about? We are talking about video Stores. games. Mm-hmm. Um, and this week, because Greg and Tim are both out... We've got the Motley crew for you here, and we hope that you guys enjoy the show. Anyway, of course, they were in Florida at the Full Sail University Hall of Fame week, and a bunch of you from the looks of Greg and Tim's photos on Instagram and Twitter showed up to say hello to them at the meet and greet, Mm -hmm. so that's cool. Orlando out partying. Yeah. I'm going to be there. Winter Park, Florida, I believe, was the exact name of the city. Is that correct? Oh, it's in Winter Park. I thought about going to Full Sail. Back when I was like yeah. looking for art schools to go to, it's good. And I was like, "There's no way I could ever do this." Like, Why? You know, just exp- it was. It, oh, it's really I ended up going to the Art Institute anyway, but mm-hmm. Full Sail was like the destination for when I was in high school looking for avenues to spread my creativity. Yep. Right, Kevin? Yep. Mm-hmm. Looks like they partied though. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. They had a lot of partying happening. Yeah. yeah, very jealous. They're having fun out there. Very I'm jealous. gonna be out there in Orlando for Guardian Con. Very uh, nice. Oh, July wow. 4th, but that's a few months away now, or less than. Shout it's out like to Omni Waffle. Five weeks away? Six yeah, weeks? Five it's weeks? It's coming up fast. That's really cool. So, Guardian Con started off as only like a Destiny thing, right? And it's kind of branched out and started into, off at, yeah, they were like meeting the at a restaurant bar. Now. Yeah. <laughs> they were going to meet at a restaurant bar or something, and a ton of people came down. That was the first one that I missed. So, it's like, it's like a kind of funny meetup. Yeah. Exactly. Then it like blew up, and now it's become bigger. It's uh, it had Fortnite last year. Borderlands is going to be there this year, and a bunch of stuff. There's even more announcements. But above all, it's a charity driven event. Oh, um, gotcha. They raise money for St. Jude's. Jude's. Yeah. yeah. They do wow. millions and millions every year. It's been getting bigger and bigger so pretty exciting what's yeah. like the, what's like the average sort of draw there 
The reason to go? Like no, no, thousands no, no. of no, people like, yeah, wise? How many? Oh, yeah. I think it was, a, usually it had been, I think, around two to 5,000 total uh -huh. across the days. Now, I don't know if it's going to break those numbers, but it's somewhere gotcha. in there. It's not like massive. I do feel like it has been growing and become, it's becoming more of a, like uh, just it, a thing that normal gamers talk about. Because it, it, I know it started off as a small con yeah. back in the day, and I feel like kind of it's... Not like a household name. Yeah, it was but Destiny Kong the there. first year. Yeah. That's what happened. And then oh, of course gotcha. they said, well, hey, you know, if you could not use that name, and they went with Guardian Con. But uh, it's actually one of the best community events I've been to. It's just mostly hanging out and meeting people. It's driven around that versus um, playing games and all that stuff. Although that's becoming more of a thing. And tournaments has become more of a thing too, like watching um, everything. They had Fortnite last year. They had, uh, I think they had PUBG and they had Destiny. Mm -hmm. And so there's like a big arena or, or seating gathering that you can oh, watch. Oh, okay, gotcha. So. Interesting. Anyway, coming up. Sounds groovy. Andy. What's up? Let's start with you. We've all been playing a little bit of VR this week, but if you guys caught Nick's Instagram post from last week, you may have seen Andy playing some Everybody's Golf on PSVR. Game so, not provided with PlayStation. I bought it. Good Drew for you. was kind of shocked. I was, <laughs> that you bought a game? Well, because, you know, it, you, you normally request a game from Greg Miller, yeah, yeah. but he's off in Florida vacationing. He's in the Key West, uh, Florida Keys, <laughs> on his yacht, doing all this sort of fun <laughs> his stuff. His leisure boat. And so uh, I was like, I don't really want to ask him because I need. I want to play this before tomorrow's games cast, right? So... I just bought the damn thing, thirty bucks. Um, and I, I'm a golf fan, just you know, an actual golf fan, not just oh. golf games. And uh, everybody's golf kind of swept uh, the kind of funny studios, right? Like all of us were playing it. We were all super into it. We played it several times on stream. Um, and back in the day, I was a huge fan of like Tiger Woods on Wii and shit like that. Uh, the Wii Motion Plus back when I was dominating Longhorn Landing in Austin, Texas. And it's oh, yeah, the motion complex. plus that connected on the bottom. Yeah, right? you had the motion plus. It added right. like that extra dimension or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I've, heat. I've always been a fan of golf games. Um, and so I love everybody's Same. golf. VR just seems like, holy shit, this could be really really neat. Yeah. Go ahead. I, no, I'm just saying I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it because I didn't know this about you. I'm a golf fan too. Yeah. I stopped playing many years ago, but I used to go out around here and loved it. I reviewed I play like once a year, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I used to play like, you know, whatever, once a month at mm -hmm. least. Or, but it's been many years. I would be awful. But regardless, I love it. It's so much fun. I uh, reviewed a ton of the Tiger Woods games on GameCube. And I used to play Lynx. Um, I think it was called Lynx um, on, you know, Windows and all that. Golf games, you know, in video games, they've always been a great demonstration of like the technological prowess of the hardware. And mm -hmm. so anyway, I've always been super into them. The coolest Whether thing arcade was arcade or, or simulation. Right. Yeah. The coolest thing was on, a, I believe, the Xbox 360 version back in the day of Tiger Woods, where uh, it was one of the first game face uh, where you took yes. a photo of your face and you uploaded yeah, yeah, it to yeah, their yeah. site or whatever. And that one is like still the best one that I've seen yeah. to this day because I feel like it hasn't gotten any better since then. I don't know <laughs> why it was weird. The feeling of that one. Yeah. I forget if that was the one where you could add the top spin yet. Was it more realistic? Remember when you it could was like just 360? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but anyway. they, they all became cross platform. Like it was, um, yeah. you know, it was on everything else. But it's funny. I probably reviewed whatever one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So, right. every, so everybody's golf VR. Um, it is, it feels like it's a very, like it's almost like diet to everybody's golf. Like it's the VR component that you're kind of mm. used to where, you know, games come out and then you kind of get the VR version and it doesn't yeah, it's not feel like the fully featured. Mm -hmm. um, the There's no walking around kind of your, your home grounds or whatever. It's just you pick your course. I believe there's three courses. But the way they sort of implement progression is that you can only start off uh, hitting three holes at a time. So it's like you do three and you're done and you do three again. And eventually if you do that enough, you'll become level two. And then you unlock nine holes or whatever. Um and it's just it's a kind of interesting way for them to kind of put more hours into the game instead of just giving you 18 holes from the start. Yeah. Um, huh. I think it controls really well. I enjoy the way it controls. Um, it's super immersive. To it was really funny yesterday because I we had the windows open because it was kind of hot back there, and I'm like on the ground looking at how the green moves. And like I'm seeing the wind blow, and I'm feeling the breeze hit me from the, <laughs> from the open window, and, and I was like, Joey, this is so realistic right now, dude. This is awesome. Um, I I think it's great. I um, 
but I, I think I would have bought it regardless just because I love golf games anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but in VR, it really is kind of a, an added treat to where you... Um, the, the swinging feels natural, well, in a, in a way. You don't ever want to go like a full golf swing. You kind of just... It's kind of like on a... I remember on uh, Tiger Woods Golf back in the day with the Wiimote, you didn't have to do a full screen. You could just go like with your wrist and it yeah. would the speed and no, everything that's would kind of simulate yeah, golf. Had, one of my favorite golf games of all time. Oh, yeah. The simplest of golf yeah, games, but I mean, wrist. that's what you do. You cheese it. Just a flick it. of the wrist, yeah. yeah. But this, you know, I like I like getting into it. I like feeling like I'm standing yeah. there or whatever. Uh, but it, it don't expect like an actual golf swing to work here. I do think right. that This it, is not like a Rory McIlroy game. No, 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 no. What's up? No, I was just like agreeing in general. The oh, swing yeah. uh, is one of the problems I had. I'll I'll wait until. <laughs> yeah, I um I still think it works pretty fine. It could have been camera placement. I was having camera placement issues, and the room was bright because the yeah. windows are shiny, which can cause an issue. Yeah, it's hard for the VR unit to catch that little you know yeah, glowing we ball or whatever. The shades, actually, um, but I I'm definitely enjoying it. The again I I think we just unlocked the second course, and I just unlocked the second caddy Lucy. Still does. Still does kind of like the little kind of silly things where, you know, the very attractive caddy is yeah. kind of talking with you. And here, here's very, the weirdest thing. They're very busty, um, yeah, mini skirted, very Japanese busty, adorable style. woman. You know, they're, they're, they're both Japanese. You There's missed Caucasians. the best. Like, you okay. haven't even experienced the best part yet. In no, this I've fucking barely game. played that Oh, my much, God. But. I can't believe this is even a feature. Okay. So. You know the the the, the cat. Oh, oh and, it's, and it's not a sti- It's not stylized from the standard everybody's golf because uh, everybody's golf. The the one that came out last year, I believe, the characters were a lot oh, yeah, more. That's right. They're more cartoony, big heads, right? tiny bodies. That's like, right. They like me's. These yeah, are they, real cats. They're very a lot more similar to me's. This one is still not fully realistic, but the you know the women have like bigger eyes and they, they look like anime characters. They almost. have a lot more big features. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> than um, you would expect. Yeah. But they're but they're human. They are human Japan. proportioned, right? You know, they're not like these weird kind of yeah. uh, you know scary stylized creatures, which I think works. Caricatures, because I mean, even any t- <laughs> that's perfect. You're fired. I just gave. A, I that's love perfect. It. Yeah. Um, anytime any one of these uh, caddies would like walk up to me, like they walk up to you and then they bow, okay. and like I would get scared just because I'm just like, oh, like VR is kind of freaky. Yeah. 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 They're it's, they're right up in there, and uh, they're in the room with you. That's the thing you got to remember with the game. Yeah. It's not like playing on the TV. You're they're right there. Like you might walk up to you. Yeah, like when you when you go golf, you walk up to the front desk, right? And yeah. you like reserve your thing and there's a woman right there and you see the menus and they're like, "What do you want to pick? What course do you yeah. want?" It's do literally you- like that's what it was like when I logged in. Andrea, if she was the person at the front desk, it was like this, and the menu was there, and I actually had to like, yeah, back, I had to back. It's off. kind of freaky, yeah. Turn my audio's all over. Um, this. and so you end up, uh, you pick, you know, whether you want three. Uh, the more you progress, I think we're at like level eight now or whatever. But the weirdest thing happened yesterday, where uh, I'm enjoying the game, having a fun time, and then my caddy, I think, I think her name was like Mi- Riku or I forgot, I forgot her name, Rico, I forgot her name. Anyway. In the middle of a match, in the middle of me like doing a, a little three hole course or whatever, uh, she said something. Did she you? goes, <laughs> "Do you want to? Do you want to come with me to enjoy the sights of the course?" <laughs> what? And, <laughs> and the game stops. You stop golfing. Oh, you said yes, of course. Oh, of course. I mean, yeah. she's cute, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I'm single now, guys. Come on. <laughs> and. Uh, and suddenly you are on like a balcony overlooking one of the vistas and this is the view like you know pretend you're the player the view is like her like this right oh, no. so andy has now turned around and yeah. put his butt to the camera and she's just like she looking went, and she's like and she turns around and she's like it's beautiful isn't it and she's like looks <laughs> no. at you and you're just kind of like, like she's looking her, over her shoulder very coyly the you're just enjoying this moment on this balcony <laughs> and and <laughs> You just stay there, and you can move on. In everybody's golf? In everybody's golf. I could not believe what I was seeing. It was so bizarre. Oh, but my god! I gosh. do believe it because it's Japan. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say that, but, but I just, still I true. mean, But I expect the caddies to just be, uh, you know, attractive, because that's a very Japan thing. But, like, yeah. the fact that, like, we went on this, we, on this date... And so, like, so fuck, just I didn't so ask. I didn't to, even try to kiss to her. You know, her? what's the tip? I don't situation? know. I have no Awkward. idea. Just the tip. <laughs> it was so bizarre. Andy, I had dude. a question. <laughs> yeah, it was a three hole course. I'm getting a four hole course. You know what I'm saying, friend? <laughs> I got it. And yeah. try, I'm gonna make it worse. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So it, I'm gonna make it worse. 
Yeah, I'm just curious, you know, whether you want to spend, say, two minutes there with her or 20. I think you can spend it a lifetime. <laughs> I felt like no it was more a lifetime. It's just you. So you can stay and there and watch her for as long as you need yeah. in that moment. And as long as you need, yeah. Okay. And you can get up right up closer. It's very... <laughs> wow. I couldn't believe I'm it. I'm not sure what to make of that. Uh, you need to experience it to, to believe it. Because <laughs> right. I like... I even now, I feel like I'm lying, <laughs> but yeah, I'm no, not. No, I believe it, but in the very little amount I played, like I was having trouble like figuring out the swing and it was taking me a while. Um... And they started talking to me. Like, it was very, like, mo- chitter chatter. Like, very, very cute They're, British it's little, Yeah, like, little developing a, a minor relationship mm-hmm, with you. Yeah. So now I could see there's a little bit of that going it's, on. I, um, I just didn't expect that sort of to, thing to happen. And yeah. so, that's right. When you log in the game, can you choose a gender? And, like, there's no reverse scenario, no, is there? there? Th- like, no, 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 no. There are no, I don't believe there are like male Like, if Andrew wants to get, like, a hot guy caddy, like, I don't is that? think so, no. What? <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Seems like I a would be okay street. with it if I could, like, get yeah. some koi I don't over know the for shoulder. Sure. <laughs> I don't from, know for sure. You know. I believe there are four caddies. I've unlocked two of them. I just unlocked Lucy. Mm-hmm. She's a little bit taller, right? A little bit more intimidating to me as a human being. <laughs> but still, like, very cute, right? Um, but I unlocked a third color option for Riku. I forgot her name. Uh, and we're just developing this bond. And at this point, it's like, who's who's going to be my favorite? You know what I mean? I'm only laughing because you're yeah. clearly getting attached <laughs> to these characters and you're single. And like you're in yeah. a VR world, yeah. like just getting like in relationships yeah. with these these caddies. It's really fun. So, and and that's the it reminds me of like a Black Mirror episode, honestly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well uh, but then. again, the game is fun. I, I uh, you know, aside from all the other cool, really like horny stuff, <laughs> the game's great. Um, I like, uh, it, it does this really cool thing where kind of like a normal golf games, you can look at the higher bird's eye view. Yes. Right? And so that feels really neat because you're, you're, you're looking at yourself. Yeah, it's really cool. You you like you're like God's eyes from above yeah. looking down at you on the. I feel course, like I'm right? Attack on Titan or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Or you're in like a Titan. Yeah, so like you you get you know you go up into the sky and you see and you get to choose where you wanted to go or whatever. Um, I I definitely enjoy the gameplay. I got several tweet. Uh, I tweeted out yesterday. That I was playing. And I got several replies of like, "How does it feel? Does it feel gimmicky?" It doesn't. It doesn't really feel arcadey or anything like that. Okay. You can still do the thing in everybody's golf where you choose. Uh, the the cup to be like a tornado cup. So like if you don't hit it well, the, there's a tornado in the cup that kind of sucks the ball in or whatever. To oh, that like sounds make it great. Easy. Like cheese. It's like bumper bowling kind of. Yeah. Okay, I'm into that. But I just play. You know, I play standard because I I'm a decent golfer. I'm not horrible, but I'm you know still pretty bad in real yeah. life. IRL. I'm trying yeah. to look up a video and see if I can see I, the date, like, the caddies, the, the, the date with the caddy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, far, I just see the busty caddy. I don't see yeah. the date with the caddy. And they have a British, and, and you know they're just super sweet and like, oh, uh, line up the putt now. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, you're so adorable. <laughs> uh, it's good stuff. Have you played any other golf VR games before this? Um, I haven't. Because there's a, there's some I guess on there's Rift and uh, Oculus. I uh, haven't. Or, no, or no, five. Come, I mean, maybe, but I haven't had the chance. So this was my first experience. Yeah. In golf VR, which is. You know, going back to the technology aspect, it really is. It's I can't wait for them to perfect this. Yeah, like it has a ton of potential. It's it's. I mean, I think even right now at this early stage, it feels great. And even like there's the cool thing that I do like when I'm actually golfing, where like I'm about to like I'm preparing the putt, and then I like get down on a knee and like look at how the green is lying. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it tells you anyway, but it feels cool to like see it from that perspective. And and you know, I th- I think it's awesome. I think yeah. it's, they did such a great job with it. Um. Again, it does feel kind of like feature incomplete. Like there's not, there's no real story ex- except mm-hmm. for the relationship you're building with these women. Um, but there's no like create a player. There's no progressing through. Uh, you know, one of the things I loved about playing, I believe Mario Golf on like Super or no on a, I think it was like Game Boy Color, was that like you're the new golfer on the block and you got to like it was kind of like Pokemon meets golf where you go to this course and this golf leaders like hey kid like i heard you're a challenge for me and not <laughs> not today and then you play him and it's like <laughs> it's awesome here there's none of that it's super stripped down um but i think yeah, that could also you just go in and start golfing that could just be more approachable for somebody that wants yeah. a more simplified game it's yeah. like when i played nba on switch nba 2k on switch where you know the switch has none of the story stuff and i was so happy because i'm i've just had it with the story modes on nba 2k like, like playing on ps4 and stuff anyway. So on Switch, it's just all games. Here, it's just 
You just go golf. Yeah, you pick the, the course. You pick the caddies. Uh, the wind uh, mile per hour. You pick whether you want the courses to be mirrored or not. Yeah. And then you pick your caddy. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly, not a ton of relationship. <laughs> Fall in love. And yeah. History is made. Well, this is riveting. Mm -hmm. the, riveting. <laughs> yeah, so I... I well, so no men... Uh, uh, so far, as, as far as I've seen, no male caddies. I'm Listen, sorry. I wouldn't kick a female caddy out of bed, all right? Yeah. Good, so yeah. It's, that's fine I by mean, you. I mean, you saw them. But still. But, you know, you should give... In all fairness. You know, Lucy was a looker. Give, you know? <laughs> give dual gender options or even yes. multi, multi gender options. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing. Uh, um... Shall we, um, shall we move a, on to the next thing? If I can real fast, I know we only have so much time, but what, do you know if you can play with the controller using button taps? You can't, no, button taps I don't think so. I think you could just use the dual shock as like Oh, a you have to thing. keep swing? I, I was think. hoping you could play with just buttons because what I was gonna say is I really like the immersiveness of, of it. Yeah, I'm not, I like all these games. Like it's so immersive, the swing's not gonna feel real. Yeah. And you're gonna slice it when you don't want. And I, I like it that it's there and it's, actually it's a ton of fun. I could see playing it with friends and passing the headset no around. No multiplayer, even. that's a problem. Oh, there's not no multiplayer. No multiplayer. You can't play online against anybody. So you'd have to create your own Let's multiplayer. Let's be honest, how many people are going to be in the queue to play online multiplayer in a PSVR game? Ask Firewall yeah, how online, that went. I don't know. True, yeah. right? I actually, think it could be fun in the same house as long as you could watch the person play and then change the headset That out seems like a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. because you yeah. would have to recalibrate it every time you take the headset off. I would have to constantly have my Neutrogena okay. oily wipes and like, I get a very oily face, you know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I did dig it as well. Uh, it seems a little feature incomplete, but that's too bad that you always have swing. I would enjoy it more if I could actually just button tap it. I, I, I can't even confirm that. Because the immersion is cool. Because okay. I, know, I know you can use a DualShock. I don't know if it requires you to swing the DualShock Got or it. actually button tap. Yeah, I tap. saw that it let you choose the controllers and I didn't try the other yeah. option, but I dug it too. It was, it was neat. Except it's cool. The, the it makes me want a PSVR, honestly, because I, yeah. I enjoy standing there and it, getting some activity instead of just sitting down on my ass. Yeah, it's still like graphically, there's such a long way to go, but it still looks pretty decent. It's yeah. funny, like it looks like an Xbox 360 game to me still. Play with uh, the window open. A lot of VR open. games yeah, do, though. They just, yeah. do. just because of the way that they are designed. But okay, I'm putting a pin in this. Good. Fine. Let's move on to Dauntless. Mm. So Andy, this is the other game that you have been playing. Uh, I talked about Dauntless last week on the show. Of course, it launched this week, and they announced um, right before the launch it's the first console game to launch with true cross-play between Xbox One, PS4, and PC for Epic Game Store, which is fantastic. It's in fact, the only the third game to have cross-play between PS4, Xbox, and PC joining it's a new frontier. For Fortnite and Rocket League. Um, but this is pretty cool. So what do you think of Dauntless so far, Andy? Um, I think it's really... Uh, as somebody who enjoyed Monster Hunter, I feel, I, like it's, um, I feel like it's more user-friendly in a way. Mm. Yes, agreed. Um, the hub world is... It, it reminds me a lot of... Ramsgate. It reminds me a lot of playing World of Warcraft back in the day, like going up to NPCs and, well, met Traveler. And then they have like their own... <laughs> dialogue box that you want to read or you just don't read like most people in you know games like that you accept quests the quests are pretty straightforward i do feel like a lot of the worlds that you travel to just have kind of like palette swaps like i know they're different worlds where you want to go take down a well it's all part of the same shattered isle yeah but you want to go take down like a, a frost behemoth mm -hmm. and the frost behemoth's world kind of just looks like a white version of the fire behemoth's world like i the there's Sounds not like a the whole, world design is a little. There's not a whole lot of variation, up. like except for the fact that like it's all different colors and like Thematic, the grass is yeah. green here, but this one that's kind of volcanic. But this one, it's what they still feel very samey to me. Um, and it could just be because the world is laid out in a certain way where uh, it's obviously very open. It kind of has to be very open. I see what you're saying. In order to have these yeah. big arenas. Um, I, I do think that they did a great job with a lot of the behemoth animations. It's really fun and super creative. My my problem with it so far is I think that like I'm too early in right now to they did such a great job, I think, with a lot of the attack variations to where it's so hard for me to even know what attack is coming. You know, you get into a rhythm with like Souls games and yeah, not that yes. I'm a Souls player, yeah. but like I played games where you know, you know, oh that attacks this, let me dodge this way, because that always it's gotten to the point where I, I'm so early on and there are so many different behemoths that I fought that I don't, I'm dying kind of a lot because I don't know the variation and I don't know what animation that thing is and what animation is that attack going to mm -hmm. do, you know? Um, and it's going to take some time to get comfortable thing, with your for weapon sure. combos and all oh, yeah, of the sure. items that you can bring into the hunts with you. Like For me, I, you know, obviously the... 
immediate comparison is is Monster Hunter since I wasn't really a God Eater player and it took me probably a solid 15 to 20 hours before I felt competent, not yeah. even confident in Monster Hunter. So I would imagine that Dauntless probably has a similar learning curve. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the, the move sets are really fun once you get the hang of you know, square, 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 and then you hold triangle. And I, I've been using sort of the, the Kratos blade hmm. weapons. The, the chain blades. blades. Yeah, the chain blades. Those are really, really fun and satisfying, and they look cool as hell. Yeah. I've never been a huge fan of, uh, like, even when we played Monster Hunter World, I was never a huge fan of the big, heavier weapons. Like the great swords and the yeah, hammers. I just, I never liked... Uh, once you get into an animation, you are stuck there, and hopefully yeah. you hit the guy. You <laughs> yeah. know, I, I kind of never, I never dug that whole thing. And I, it reminds me of back in Dragon Age, uh, like Inquisition, playing dual wielding daggers. Like oh, that's yeah. more my style. The sort Agreed. of speed styles uh, more my thing. The um, the the paid stuff is kind of interesting. They do this thing where you unlock these things called cells, I believe, and the cells are kind of like the add-ons that you put on your armor. They're like gems or augments, yeah. Yeah, uh, and they, you know, will give you, you know, uh, every time you get attacked, 15% of blah, 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 you know, that sort oh, of shit. They give you buffs? Like, yeah, so so there's a, way to, there's a way to fuse cells to make them more powerful. Yeah, you take weaker cells and you merge them together, kind of like the gem system in Diablo, where you would get yeah, the yeah, lower yeah. level gems and then combine them together to get higher. Even buffs. in Division Two, like with some of the uh, the mods, like I yeah. know you can like fuse mods and make you know yep whatever you know it does stuff like that. But the uh, there's an interesting paid element to it, to where I can fuse two cells, but I have to wait 24 hours for them to fuse, or you can pay. To have that process like sped up, I believe it's like immediate. I'm not sure if it's immediate or not, but yeah, it does speed up that process. That microtransaction is fairly common in free to play games, but I have never seen it in a game like Dauntless before. Yeah, it's traditionally just reserved for mobile titles. But I also don't think we've ever really seen a free to play game like Dauntless before, have we? Like a not that I'm aware of, and admittedly, I don't know enough about other big free to play games in the space, like Warframe, for example. Right. Um, I don't know how they point. handle their microtransactions. So, yeah. So far, what I've seen, a lot of it is cosmetic. Um, they are in season five right now, so the season five theme. They have their own battle pass. I think it's called like the Hunter Pass. It is called the Hunt called. Pass. Hunt Pass. Um, and it's very similar to where, uh, I, I guess the theme right now is sort of like, um, like a ninja, ninja assassin, mm -hmm. right? Like there's cherry blossoms everywhere. Um, you can get uh, upgraded armor when you look like a ninja. Hmm. I, uh, I believe last season was like kind of a Viking sort of theme or something like that. So they do have seasonal things to kind of bring you back in, sort of similar to what like, a lot of other games yeah. do. Yeah, Fortnite. Yeah, and Overwatch you. and all that stuff. Um, during the winter, everything will kind of be covered in snow. You know, they do interesting things like that with the home world, with Ramsgate or whatever. Um, I think it's cool as hell for, as a free-to-play title. Like, I, I still haven't paid anything, and I think I'm maybe like seven to ten hours in around that range. Um, I'm having actually a lot of fun with it. Like, the other night I, I, was, I was streaming it, and then I stopped, and I took a shower, and I was like, I kind of want to, like, you know... I, I really Get want this. There. I really want this new upgraded armor piece. You know, it's very similar to Monster Hunter, where you take down the Frost Behemoth or whatever the hell it's called, and it has its Get own armor set. Yeah. yeah, and so you know, you want the upgraded fire set so that when you go fight fire behemoths you don't get damage as much because it's all like resistant mm -hmm. to fire but then you want the frost weapon to take down the fire thing. you know, mm -hmm. it has that, that hook that's really fun um, I think the combat's a lot more flashy than Monster Hunter like I feel like the really? it's, the, it's dam all more the damage numbers stuff, um, yeah. falling oh. off of the enemies definitely makes it feel a little bit more like action RPG yeah. in that sense. Um, and the only real problem that I had with the combat, and admittedly I haven't played enough with it, was the missing reticule um, mm. or reticle. Reticle. Mm -hmm. Reticle. Yeah. That's the word. Um, is that I just. I think sometimes I maybe use it as a bit of a crutch. Sure. <laughs> um, and I perhaps just need to practice a little bit more. My weapon of choice is the repeaters because I like ranged mm, weapons. Yeah, yeah. Unlike you as well, I don't traditionally favor heavy weapons like the greatswords, axes, mm -hmm. the hammers of 
of those types of games. But um, so far, I've been enjoying it. I just really love the customization that they offer because I think in a game yeah. like that, that's a live service game that you're going to be spending a ton of time with your character, especially in a third person game where you get to see your armor and your character model a lot. Yeah. Um, having such a diverse set of customization the options. The die system is really neat. It's great. Yeah. yeah. I haven't really unlocked a whole lot as far as that goes because I. I know that there a lot of that is tied to micro- microtransactions, and I'm normally the type of player that like if I put ten hours into a game, I'm like, all right, let me give you some money. Like I've mm-hmm. I've had fun with this free game, you know. Let me let me reward you a little bit. So I, I might look into the the whole dying system there. Um, but I do I again don't expect Monster Hunter World with a bunch of cutscenes or Mm-mm. like there's not going to be uh it's very narrative light yeah it's very it's very narrative light where the only real narrative there is is like at the start of the game you have a cutscene, and then you talk to npcs in the world that just stand there and say ah you're back or it's whatever like uh, real quick just to chime in on that i i've never once listened to any of the monster hunter like cutscenes. oh for sure and for I sure paid probably 80 hours I like I hated them. Every yeah. Time oh, of course. The, the narrative <laughs> monster wow. hunter wasn't here. exactly yeah. like yeah. you know. But uh, and so that may the world on that fire. may be a favorable thing for some people. Um, one thing that it does that I do miss from Monster Hunter is going into Monster Hunter and just going to the free the free roam mode. Like you can do patrols here, but you're still on that time limit. You still need to take down a certain monster. Oh, you're and I, out on. And Monster Hunter World was my first Monster Hunter, so I don't know if the prior Monster Hunters did that to where you could free roam. But one thing I miss is like, like go on an adventure kind of a thing. Yeah, well, one thing I miss about Monster Hunter World was the level design to where you're going. There's a lot of scaling. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of elevation differences and stuff like that. And my one of the coolest things I think in just video games period is seeing two monsters fight each other hmm. when they just happen upon each other, and you get to suddenly you're in Jurassic Park and you're watching these yeah, two giant cool. things Dude, ignore Raffalo's you, taking on literally anybody. It's so badass. So good. And like, there's none of that here because the only other living thing besides you and the NPCs, or not the NPCs, besides you and your teammates, are the, the behemoths. behemoths. And there's just oh, one of them there. There's not even like small enemies. No, there's nothing. There is like a that. monster hunter though, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah, a, yeah, lot there's like a lot of little smaller animals. Yeah. And in the world, like you're kind of just like in this open world area or whatever. Yeah. In, in these these. Shattered Island, like sort of floating things. You're going to that island to take down that behemoth specifically. So, again, it's free to play though, so you can't really expect a lot of features. Yeah. Like that. Well, also, I think you know comparing it to Monster Hunter is not necessarily fair because Monster Hunter's been around since the early 2000s. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and Phoenix Labs is a relatively small studio compared to Capcom, and so they just did not have the same amount of funding that oh, sure, a Capcom yeah. game would have, and you know the years of learning. But that being said, I'm with you that the world does feel a little bit empty, and mm-hmm, hopefully, vacant. you know, over time they'll continue to add art assets and diversify the NPC and add in more creatures and things like that. So, And that's the beauty of it being free to play is yeah. that you don't feel like you're paying $60 for a game that's like half baked at launch because you're not paying anything. <clears throat> exactly. exactly, yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling very left out on this conversation. I've been wanting to, uh, what I mean by that is I haven't played Dauntless, I haven't got to play Monster Hunter, I've always wanted to. I, I can only play so many games, man. I'm just like, so I, I say bro- this all the time. But yeah. So I meant to save this for, <laughs> for the show. Uh, so yeah, I broke embargo on it the other day. <laughs> oh, unknowingly, um, I heard about this. I wasn't even gonna bring it up. Unknowingly, the uh, I'm super jazzed to play it. I'm like, oh, I have the game a day early before it comes out. Um, Greg slacked me the code, and my first thought is and like, didn't slack you the embargo information? Well, no. My my first thought is like, well, there's no embargo information, but also this game's been out forever. So there yeah. probably isn't even an embargo. Because of the beta and stuff. Let me just know. play the game, right? And I'm like super excited and like, <laughs> oh, like there's a, I have a lot of viewers because this game hasn't even come out yet. A lot of people are excited to see this brand new game. And I'm creating a character. <laughs> even it's been out, sort of. A, a character creation is kind of light as well, too. They, they do some interesting things with like, uh, uh, you pick the character's face. Mm. And then you pick masculine or feminine body. Mm-hmm. And the face kind of stays the same, but only like the jaw features will kind of like straighten out if you want like... A hulkier, you know, hunkier looking dude or whatever. Hmm. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the hairstyles and again, the facial features, uh, the facial hair. Let me have the mustache disconnected from the beard, guys. Come on. It's <laughs> disconnect. I know, it's 2019, right? We, we all want to feel included. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so so I'm, I, I'm done with the character creator, and there's a couple people in my chat that are like, how do you have this game? Mm-hmm. And that's happened before whenever I'm playing a game that, like, 
the streaming embargo is ready to go. Like it's up so I can stream it, but it isn't out yet. And I've right. had yeah. people pop in the chat yeah, and be like, that happens all the time. yeah, like, Hey, how'd you get this game? Like, Oh, you know, I yeah, requested they a, code. Me a code. Like, Oh, cool. Sure. That's awesome. You know, whatever. So there's a couple of people like in my chat asking me how I got it. And then, uh, one of them was like, Hey, read so-and-so's message. You're like, <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm ignoring them, but like read their message, Re- go look and read it. So I was like, okay, chill out. What the fuck? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes s- you get people in your chat like you read this person's message. You're like, dude, yeah, like, don't you. tell like, them what yeah. to do. Like, so, that, so I saw the message and it was like, how do you it. have this game? And I was like, oh well, I work in the industry and I requested a code, so that's how I got it. <laughs> and I'm just going along my merry way, and it's like <laughs> I'm the community manager, and this game is embargoed until tomorrow at 7 a.m. Oh, Pacific time. Man. Whoopsies. I want to clip it. Is there was, a clip of that oh, when you realize? Yeah, fucking kebabs clipped the shit yeah, out of it. Are you kebabs kidding me? sent it to me. And so I'm just like, oh, fuck. And immediately my body gets super oh hot. God. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> And it's the same feeling you get when like you show up to class in high school or college and they're like, all right, turn in your essays. You're like, what fucking essay, dude? Yeah. I didn't know that was an essay. My body got super You're in hot. I was like, underwear all this like, oh, shit. So immediately I go to the home screen on, PS- on PlayStation and I close out of the game and I text Greg and I'm like, hey, uh, there's an embargo. Whoops. Little problem. And Greg is like, stop streaming, stop streaming. I was like, oh yeah, I cut off the game. So Greg called me while I'm streaming. And I'm like, yeah, so a couple of community managers are in here and they told me, uh, you know, the game's <laughs> under embargo. And he started life, he's like, well, fuck, that's my bad. I didn't put the info in there. So then I move Greg on. Miller. I, I go to play Overwatch, but then Greg texts back. He's like, I'm looking at the email. There's no embargo information on the email at all. That's oh, not true. I have is... the exact same email and there is an embargo in oh, the email. Oh, really? So Greg's a liar. So Greg Greg's is lying to you. <laughs> wow. So anyway, here's, so the, here's the, the thing show. that might have been, conf- yeah. might have been confusing though, and it was confusing to me. I had to double take because I at first I panicked because I gave preview coverage of Dauntless, and then I got the second email with a second embargo, and I was like, oh shit, do I have to pull these videos down? Oh. I was like, no, I got access to a preview build, which was not mm. the final build, and also we didn't show any gameplay. Got it. Um, and then the second email with the code for pre-launch, very s- clearly in bold, says all covered is embargoed until. 7 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday, May 21st. This includes written impressions, videos, social posts, etc. Whoops. Yeah, so I was... Gotta read those embargoes closely. So yeah. I just felt like such a fuck... And, and, like, the stream started off with me being, like... I answered somebody's question, like, oh, Andy, how'd you get the game? Like, it's not out yet. And I was like, Requested guys, I'm the number right? one game journalist, guys. Like, <laughs> I, got this, I got the scoops on everything. Did I you could, say that, I like, play with, I was fucking around. I was like, I can play whatever the fuck I want, guys. Come on, you don't think I've played Death Stranding 3 yet? Of course I have. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, so yeah. I'm just talking shit, and then that happens. I'm like, oh, my God. Wow, I'm that's so the perfect embarrassed story right arc right there. Yeah, I was so embarrassed. Oh um, but then I ended up, you know, playing it yesterday. And for the last two nights, I've been playing it. Um, and, yeah, I'm digging it a lot. I think if you are... Uh, not looking to pay money and you want to play a game that still d- isn't super behind the paywall like I haven't run into any issues like that yet um, I think it's a lot of fun especially when you're with a good crew that like is coordinated and stuff like that I think it's fun as shit you could still queue with randoms of course um, and uh, which is always weird because the you start off in the level and then you can go farm materials or sometimes your teammates just go fight without you. And <laughs> yesterday this happened to me to where I'm farming and they were fighting and I swear to Christ for like eight to ten minutes, I didn't know where they were. <laughs> because, yeah, because if they don't fire a flare yeah. for you to see, uh, then it's going to be very difficult for you to find them because <laughs> they, as of when I played, um, they didn't have tracks, animal tracks in the game. And so it's really hard to hunt the behemoth. I didn't you, know that was in the game. If you're not... Wait, what? I don't know. Animal I don't tracks. know if I've seen animal tracks. No, right, because they're not in the game. Oh, oh, I thought you meant now they they would be. <laughs> no, I see. Like, as far like as I'm aware, weird. they're still not in the game. It's something I asked the team about when I did my preview. I was like, is this something you guys are considering? Because right now, like, if you get separated from your team and you're not, and if you're one person is close to the behemoth and the rest are far back, yeah. you'll miss all of the clues that show you where the behemoth has gone. Oh, like I see. like birds flying in yeah. the air or trees moving or what have you. And I was, then I felt you're so kind of screwed. Yeah. I was like, my, my team's got to be so mad at me right now because I cannot for the life well, of me no, find like, them. Hopefully they would fire up a flare in case yeah. you were lost. You know yeah. what I mean? That's the problem with not being on comms in a, a co-op game, right? Sure, yeah. And you could turn on the mic, but I, I of course, have like my... It, if I'm not playing with friends or people yeah. that I know, I have my mic. Especially? Streaming, you gotta be extra yeah. careful too. Gotta be yeah. real careful. Um, well, but cool. I think it's I think it's really cool. Uh, I I do th- recommend people at least trying it out if you're into 
if you've ever played Monster Hunter or have been sort of like tangentially interested in it, I think it's fun. Um, and there's a lot of monster variation too. I've been really twenty behemoth variations. I've been impressed yeah. with all of them. Like everyone that I've seen so far, they ha- there's a lot of cool mechanics that I'm just. I guess I was just used to Monster Hunter where you're just kind of fighting a thing that maybe like melee's you. But I've fought a lot of them where there's like a fire one that shoots out a, a spread of fireballs, and you have to dodge them correctly at the right time. There's a, a an, an an electric one that shoots out like these electric barbs, and they charge up in the ground and mm. then they shoot an electricity like orbit you and you have to dodge that like there's a cool. lot of like not uh traditional sort of monster hunter combat in here it, it's it feels more like a like you're i don't know like a um what, what's the word i'm looking for like a shoot 'em up or something like that you know mm. like a, yeah, a gun hell, a bullet hell sort that. of game you yeah. know it's really cool Nice. I, I recommend it. Yeah, I recommend yeah. I mean, I think the, the I've heard nothing but good things, and you know, there's not a lot of, or I don't know, any other free to play games like this in the genre, right? I mean, in that the are hunting, in the hunting yeah. combat like, was genre. God Eater I don't ever? So. I don't really know, but no, God Eater's not a free to play game. Okay. It's a traditional retail release. Um, so yeah, there's the, the, that's the nice part is there's like not a lot of competition. It's free to play. That's what you should be looking at. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, you can go buy Monster, Hunter, but it's free. First, compared to other free to play games, and second, in the genre, and there's just not much there. So, I think yeah. it's great that it's out. You can throw grenades. And it's, it's really cool. It's satisfying. The combat's fun. Nice. And it's cross play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cross the thing, too. And yeah. cross progression. I feel like awesome. I've been playing with mostly PC players, yeah. uh, except for like when I grew up with a couple of the guys that I play with, uh, Tucker and Bushy. Like, they're, they're on PS4. But then, for the most part, it's a lot of people on PC. I don't know if I've played with anybody on Xbox yet because I haven't, I don't know if there's an icon to indicate that. If it's oh, probably Xbox not. PS4. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Because the platforms wouldn't like that probably. Yeah. I guess. Mm, interesting. This episode is brought to you by Green Chef. Uh, Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company and meal plans include paleo, vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, keto, gluten-free, and omnivore. So that's a little something for me, for Kevin, for Nick Scarpino, for Gia Harris, for everybody under the video game sun, as we say here. Uh, Gia and I have been using Green Chef for a while now. Uh, she made these uh, these breaded pork chops. Kevin, they were fantastic. You would have loved them so much. Uh, they were Italian breaded pork chops, and they were great. Why don't you ever have me over? I don't know, because I need to eat the pork chops. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, the So here's the thing. Very super, super easy to make. 30 minutes or less, I'm, I'm seeing her in the kitchen do this thing. Next thing I know, I get to watch TV, go in, eat the food. Do I always watch TV? No, I say that I'm working. I'm really watching TV. But the food is really, really good. But when you work here, it's kind of funny. Watching TV kind of is the work sometimes. The rules, dude. It gets really complicated. Um, but Green Chef's expert chefs design flavorful recipes for your lifestyle that go way beyond ordinary substitutions. Uh, you can let Green Chef do the meal planning, grocery shopping, and most of the prep for your week after for you week after week. So you can save a ton of time, not need to worry about stuff. They'll just send it right to your door in this adorable little box. It's super easy to do. Usually I have to deal with that part. Like the box comes, I take mm-hmm. it, bring it in, yeah, break it open down. it, break it all down, put it in the fridge in the little sections that she likes to make it even easier for her. But she has so much fun. She has so much fun reading the instructions. She has like a binder. You she keeps all the it. all the recipes and I have a lot of fun eating it. Um, for a total of $75 off, that's $25 off each of your first three boxes, go to greenchef.us slash kinda75. So that's for a total of $75 off. That's $25 off each of your first three boxes. Go to greenchef.us slash kinda75. Ah, oh, fantastic stuff. I'm telling you, you got to try this. Uh, Next up, shout out to Upstart. As most of us have found out the hard way, uh, getting into debt is easy. Getting out is hard, especially if your FICO score, FICO, FICO. FICO. Ah, every time, FICO score isn't great. Sky high interest rates can make it incredibly hard for you to break out of the revolving debt cycle. Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Uh, Growing up, uh, one of my closest friends had a lot of issues uh, with this whole debt situation uh, of the credit variety. Um, And this service really could have helped him out because although his credit score was pretty low, he had great education, was working uh, consistently, and that's what Upstart looks at when they're trying to help you out with your credit. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes without affecting your credit score. The best part, once the loan is approved, most people get their funds the very next business day. That's the next day. 
That's a pretty damn good deal. Over 200,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards, student loans, fund their wedding, or just to make a large purchase. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart's ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. And hurry to upstart.com slash kind of funny to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and won't affect your credit. That's upstart.com slash kind of funny. As we saw in Nick's Instagram video, you were playing Beat Saber oh. on the Oculus Quest in the kitchen. <laughs> yes. So I wanted to try Oculus Quest, especially I hadn't tried PSVR in a while. I've played Vive and Oculus in the past. It's been a while since I've stepped into VR because I just I can't play it at home, really. I mean, I could. It's just a lot. The setup's a lot. It and I don't have a lot of space for it. And then I mostly only stream when I'm playing. And so I can't. But really listen, do. if you can play in the kind of funny kitchen, you can play anywhere. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> that's right. Unfortunately, you can't stream Quest because there's no video output. But what I will say is I was really impressed going from. It's just such a, a hassle. You know, I put on the PSVR stuff. I'm like, where do I adjust? And like the whole thing, it's fine, but it's a big production. Then I'm like, give me the headphones, you know? And I put on my headphones. I helped him and it was all the cords were all tangled. <laughs> and the cords and are tangled. And then I'm, whatever. I, ste I stepped on the helmet or the uh, the visor cord and unplugged it all yesterday. <laughs> oh, I was like, God, God damn it. Like, and it just goes black, too, yeah. I'm sure, right? So anyway. I wanted to play them back to back as much as the fidelity and everything seems to be better on PSVR um, for obvious reasons. But I just put this thing on and right away it recognizes, you know, that uh, which controller is which. It was like showing. So wait, let me take this step back. I put it on. The room stuff on, is cool. And yeah. thankfully <laughs> you can see through a very low frame rate black and white camera. It's a little dizzying, but you get used to it. The pass through camera is but to me exactly. kind of a game changer. It is yeah. because you put it on and you're not like, I mean, you have to have this for VR from now on absolutely some of the i, I forget if uh this was it the vive apex or, pinging system of yeah, vr yeah <laughs> but <laughs> oculus and vive they have uh, functionalities like that i think um because i've used it in other vr before not psvr doesn't have but where you can, i know newer versions you, of it i you know, can I've, see out of it i've tried older stuff. versions of, of Oculus. exactly oh, oh my some goodness fresh nugs uh, wow. papa nick is here so with anyway, the chicken nuggets you, just putting it on <laughs> and still being able to see the first thing I did, I was like, wait, is this actually fairly accurate? So I was like touching things to make sure I was like, okay, it's mostly what I'm seeing is not like out of whack. It's one of the most just a camera. science fiction things. Yeah. So like futuristic things where, we, where it scans the room and you're like, oh my God, this yeah. is like the movies. Like, so yeah, yeah like we heard Greg talk about this numerous times and put it anyway. So I put it on, can see through it and it recognizes the controllers sitting on the couch and it's like L and R and I was like, you know, you just knew which one to pick up and mm -hmm. put them in my hands. And overall, it was very fluid experience. Um, and then, yeah, like I just, you know, went into the menus, started up. Uh, eventually, we figured out where Beat Saber was. And yeah, it's so cool that you can just draw freehand. It's not like when I heard Greg describe it, I still think I th in my mind that it's like, gauging what a circle is and it's like auto correcting no like literally you can just draw whatever you want on a floor in this grid and set your space and then it sets a sphere around or a um a sort of cone around you yeah like the i think it's called the guardian system the yeah. guardians yeah and it's so cool that like it's, whatever you set it's gonna tell you as soon as you start going outside of it and yeah it'll put like a like a mesh grid yeah. up in yeah. the in the game but then i'm like I'm like, wait, I'm like, where are the headphones I gotta play? And they're like, you can just play it, of course. And I was yeah, like, oh it, yeah. It uses audio that goes through your skull into your head. Oh, does it use that? I thought it was the, uh, oh, so it is the. Um, well, I mean, there is a little bit of external too, but, but, you, but also, what's great about it is that you can turn it down so you're not blaring music to people around you, but it feels all really loud inside your yeah. head, almost like you're listening to headphones. Yeah, like, maybe I. haven't turned it on, like, all the way up, it is blaring out loud. It's well, very loud, yeah. yeah. Well, yes, of I asked of him course, to turn it on, and everyone will come over and be like, what's Kevin doing? We took, video, we <laughs> took a lot of video, Kevin. Video. <laughs> so that's what I wanted. But they have the option where you can turn that down, but you can still hear it very well while you're inside the headset. Yeah. Yes. yes. But, um, but whatever, we, we've heard people talk about it a lot. It came out this week. I wanted to finally try it, and uh, it is a game changer. Like, it's... Changed, you you bro. can't wait for everything to catch up, fidelity wise. Sound you know the sound needs to improve, all that stuff. But for what it is, it's really amazing. And if you want like a simple VR experience that you might just pick up and play for a little bit and set it down, I mean it's the best I've ever used. Um, fidelity wise, I did only play Beat Saber, but yeah, like that was a nice demo because it doesn't require a ton of fidelity, but it looked clean. Like everything looked good. It didn't stand out as like 
you know, low res or doors. half res or yeah. it just only had so much uh, graphics horsepower. So it felt pretty good to me. Uh, I think the one critique I have so far is on the actual headpiece. It's very top heavy. Um, part of it, I could probably cinch it a little better, but also there's no, I don't think there's a slide for the bottom or any, there's no way to like really get it cinched to your face. Where with um, PSVR, I actually, they got a lot of soft material in there and once they you have adjust that. that the screw in the back that tightens yeah, the, the it, it fits a little better. Of all of the headsets, Oculus Rift was always the most uncomfortable and the Quest is even a little bit more yeah. uncomfortable for me. It was like uncomfortable for you? Yeah. Is well, that because it was just heavy? Or yeah, like, so I have a pretty yeah. small face Face. And so yeah. when I wear the headset, I have to really crank the tightness in order to keep the the lenses in a place where the image isn't fuzzy. Right. And so I really have to tighten it across the top and across the back of the head. And, and to do that, it requires a, a lot of pressure on my face, which is why it's difficult for me to play VR for long periods yeah. of time. But overall, it was good. I think, I forget if it's 400 bucks or 350 It's 399 yeah. It launched 399, this week. Yeah. And Oculus did send, um, kind of funny, uh, an Oculus Quest headset. So mm. just just so you guys are aware. Yeah, but they didn't send me Disclosure. one. So <laughs> they didn't, but you used, you, you used the one yeah, that they sent us. In other words, I have no incentive. I mean, <clears throat> um, is the, yeah. um, it's just disclosure. Do we know, no, do we no, know battery joking. life? Um, don't know battery life. That's a great question. So it uses a USB C cord to charge, um, which is great because it charges relatively quickly, but I don't know the total battery life. Kevin, you get an idea? Uh, yeah, no, I'm, unfortunately I don't know the it, actual battery life, but I feel like I used it for maybe like 30 minutes and it went down significantly a substantial amount. Yeah. My uh, guess is it doesn't have great battery life with what it's pulling for how much is in there. Um, in fact, maybe some of the weight you're feeling is from the battery. But what I will say is I only charge it, it for about- It says two to three hours depending on usage. Depending on the game too, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I played the sports game on it. Yeah. So and they, uh, it was very basic. Oh, and I had the <laughs> volume blur. All of that's going to be a factor. Um, but, when, but let's be honest. You're not going to be in VR for two consecutive hours. Yeah, I mean, right? maybe not you. Oh, well, you're <laughs> right. Put a chip in me. Wow. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> you're, you are right, Andrew, not me. Put a chip in him. Andrew, I don't know if everybody's golf comes out and you can just uh, look at caddies in there. I mean, Andy might be in there for a while. Just go on an extended while. date with hours. your caddy. <laughs> just um, give me caddy viewer 2K20. <laughs> But I was going to say I charged it for a mere probably 10 minutes. It was fully dead because uh, it was unplugged. And within upwards 10, 15 minutes at the most, oh, I, felt like, I felt like it was 10 minutes. It was already almost 25% charged. USB-C, so man. USB-C, was yeah. cra it, So that was really good. So long story short, I would recommend it if you don't mind the lower fidelity and you don't want the hassle. Actually, it was really, it crossed my mind to like pick it up just for Beat Saber. And what I also really like about it, if you have friends or kids and family members, it's like, as evidenced by what happened today, mm -hmm. it's like go go over there. Uh, as long as you have enough space to play, and you can go anywhere with it, and you can just walk away. And you don't need a thousand to two thousand dollar computer. Yeah, you but know? you can walk right. away with it. It's it's like go in the basement, go use it there, go he any dark space or no. I guess you could probably play it outside, couldn't you? Well, we've also played. No, it, maybe not. We played it in the studio. Can like you play it outside? Yeah, why wouldn't you? I don't see well, if it's too bright, I don't know. No, uh, we it's played it with fine. the studio lights on. And I think the fine. darkness okay. is where you'd have because a problem. Because there's no, there's no camera um, that is facing you to have the, no the light that, issue. But what's right? picking up the ground? Isn't it infrared? Oh, yeah, maybe it's infrared. Yeah. But there you go if uh, it's too also, bright. Also, one more thing that I wanted to say. Um, you were talking earlier that like other people can't see it. See what? Like the game. Oh, what you're playing, yeah. I believe That's if you have side. like a Chromecast, you can... Cast it from your oh, phone. Oh, you can go Wi-Fi. So the, the piece that we haven't really talked about hmm. is that the way that you can actually um, connect and download games is through the Oculus app on your mobile phone. So you have to have an Android or an iOS device, and then you install the Oculus app, and then you connect the Oculus app to the Quest, and that's how you run the Quest for most games or how you can... Um, but you don't update the be, software and stuff. Yeah, but you, but you like, don't have to be connected well, to the app once you've got everything set up. Yeah, so once you've got everything set up, you can just go into the app store on the on the quest on the quest on the headset. And yeah, download games and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is there a Netflix app on that? Yeah, there is. 
Wow. Yeah, it's so it launched. Is it launched this week with um, fifty plus titles, many of which were on the Rift, including Dance Central VR, um, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, one of my favorite VR games, The Climb. Um, of course, we've got Beat Saber, which we've been talking about, Vacation Simulator, Super Hot VR, just to name a few titles. Moss is also on there, one of my favorite VR games from mm. last year. The most time I've ever spent in VR was with was with Moss. Nice. Um, so I think that if you guys have been holding back on VR and you're interested, this is a great entry level. I think what's better about this than something like Samsung Gear or even like a Google Cardboard is that it's certainly a step up visually and it doesn't require the substantial investment that a Rift S or an HTC Vive um, mm -hmm. would, would require or even that a PSVR would require if you don't already yeah, have a PlayStation 4. You still need 4. the Pro, exactly. You need the camera, you need yeah. room for it to look at you, you know. Yeah, I, I just, I think the... So a PSVR is what three hundred now, right? Uh, well, it depends. We did a deal of the day earlier this week that had it on sale for one eighty. Whoa! Wow! Yeah. Really? Holy crap! But sometimes that doesn't include all the. It came with um, Astrobot and Moss, but listen, those deals, those flash sales, come and go all the time. No. So, but yeah, I think the retail is two ninety nine ninety nine. Let me double check. Yeah, might as well double check. Yeah, I just think I think the the wireless, uh, you know, it being wireless, and also the controllers are great. Like I love the I love the Oculus controllers. They're so good. They're probably my favorite of the. I would totally of the agree three, with that. Yeah. Like over Vive, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really I enjoy the feel of them. I enjoy the button yeah, placement, just, the sticks of you them. You forget about them a lot. It yeah. looks like yeah, brand new. It's, it says on Amazon here it's two nineteen ninety five. So hmm. okay. two hundred bucks. Nice. Um, also, but yeah, so it's it's more expensive, but but it's not portable. Hmm. There there's like a demo um, when you first get the Oculus going. Where uh, you can, like, it's one of those, like, you put in a cartridge, you get to play a game, and uh, it, it was like a shooting gallery game, and those, um, the controller makes it so, feel so realistic, where when you really? go to grab it, it just, it feels like you had a gun in your hand. Dude, yeah. I, Kevin, yeah, like, I, oh, sorry. No, sorry. I was just gonna say, super hot was cool. Once I realized how to, because that was the first time I used oh, it. Oh yeah. Like I was like, I can't grab the gun because I thought it only had a trigger on it, on the on the controller. So I'm like trying to grab the gun, and I'm like, in the game, you see your two hands. They're like, what's wrong with my hands? Oh, yeah. I grab the gun, and then I realized just your it's thumb. Face buttons, yeah. There's a yeah. There's a there's a second button for your thumb, which yeah. is it's sitting right there. I didn't even it's, realize. It's perfect, man. Yeah. Shout Kevin, I'm really excited for uh, this is not Oculus Quest or uh, Oculus Quest related, but the. Uh, I really want to try out Firewall with that new DLC that they're coming out with. I haven't even looked into that. I would love to do like a party mode of that. It's a pain in the ass, but yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, <laughs> but it'd be cool. It'd but be dude, cool. Firewall is so good. Yeah, it'd be really cool. Um, well, since we're still talking about Oculus, I'll talk very briefly about some of my hands-on that I got during Judges Week. Both Greg and I went to this event um, during Judges Week where we got to try the Quest and the Rift S. Um, I go into a deeper dive in this week's episode of, of What's Good Games if you guys want to hear more about it. But we got to play three games. The game on the Quest was called Phantom Covert Ops um, by Sansaru. And we also got to play on the Rift S, which is like the like the upgraded version of the Rift, uh, as Guards Wrath and Lone Echo 2. So mm. Phantom Covert Ops was an interesting game where it's a tactical stealth first person shooter where you do on water traversal in a tactical kayak. <laughs> what? And these are all quests. Switch. This is just this is just one game on the quest. Okay. The other two were rift games. Okay. That's what um, I keep up. So I also like you went, huh. That sounds interesting. It sounds like you named like six games. <laughs> right? So the idea is that you play a, a like a covert soldier. So calm. Right? Yeah, exactly. So calm, but like in a kayak. And so you're seated while you play this game. And you have like a traditional like kayak <laughs> oar. And you have to row to the left oh, wow. and to the right uh, with the controllers in your hand uh, to move yourself through the world. And the, the rowing felt pretty smooth. Um, you don't bob around a lot because obviously that would cause a lot of motion sickness yeah. um, in mm -hmm. VR. And you don't really feel any resistance from the water, which I liked because then your it, arms would get super tired. Oh. Um, but I found it difficult to turn just like it's difficult to turn in a real kayak. <laughs> 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 and so, uh, 
<laughs> um, I had some trouble there, but it was it was an interesting concept. You know, you can stop and like high reeds and like hide there. You can use you have three weapons. You've got a silenced pistol. You have a sniper rifle and an SMG, and so you can use them for various situations. You can use them to take out light sources, to sneak mm. around people, and you're to always shoot on guards. the boat. You never get out of the kayak. <laughs> so it was a little it was a little interesting of an experience. Maybe you are just part man, part kayak. <laughs> maybe. Maybe you maybe you just have like have no a, a bionic yeah. kayak yeah. for for your bottom yeah. half. Um it was an interesting idea. Graphically, however, um you could tell that it was on the quest and not on the rift. Got it. Like there was a marked difference in the quality of the mm. graphics. And I don't know if that's just because of the style of game, because it's meant to be realistic. It's simulating real plants, real water, like real humans versus a game like a vacation simulator or a beat saber, which is just like all Blocks fancy of color. Right, yeah. exactly. And so it, that to me was a little bit off putting because after playing a demo in the Rift S, it was difficult to go down to the quest and see the the, the downgrade in the graphics, mm -hmm. especially since VR is um, difficult enough for me to play as it is because I get very nauseous in yeah. VR. Um, that said, the traversal felt really good. Um, the guns felt okay. The sniper was my favorite. So with the two um, Oculus touch controllers in my hands, when I would raise my hands up to my face, like I was holding the barrel of the sniper and then uh, like the stock of it, mm -hmm. I when I held it up to my face, it would aim down the scope. Oh, cool! Which That's was pretty, which, really which was sweet. pretty cool. So it would like zoom. And could zoom you do hip fire scope. if you tried? Uh, you could do hip fire. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Not that you would want to with a right. sniper rifle, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you could. Um, yeah, so the fact that it distinguishes between the two is really based cool. based off yeah. where you have your hand. Yeah. yeah, it was or it was it was, it was, a, it was a really cool feature. Um, I did find that um, this the stealth was pretty forgiving, which was nice. Good. But once you attracted the attention of the soldiers that you were trying to avoid, I mean, you were pretty much it, dead. Yeah. I mean, the SMG was okay, but like it was it had so much wobble because you're in a kayak. <laughs> so like imagine trying to hold like an automatic weapon when you're like in a kayak on water. It's you like know? pushing you back. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it was that was a little weird. I would I would have preferred a crossbow. I felt like that mm, weapon cool. lends itself to a stealth FPS style of gameplay. Laser um, sight. But, yeah. yeah, and then the the silence pistol was rough because it was only iron sights. Oh um, gosh! And so it Maybe didn't have upgrades. it didn't have the same like zoom mechanic mm. that the sniper rifle did. Um, there may be upgrades later on. I didn't get a chance to ask the dev team about that, but an interesting, interesting. title. Phantom Covert Ops. Um, and then quickly, the two other titles I got to play on the Rift S, Lone Echo 2. Did you guys ever play Lone Echo? We played Echo Arena. Yeah, I think I played that with you. Yeah. That was so good. Yeah. That was so fucking... If that game, if a if a dumbed down version of that went to like the quest, holy shit. I'd be on that in a heartbeat because I well, Lone Echo. It's more of a story based. Right? It is a story. It's story like a driven. single player story. So the the characters are back. Um, I didn't play through Lone Echo. I only played Echo Arena as well. I think I played a demo of Lone Echo, but never played all the way through mm -hmm. the story. But it essentially picks up. It's a direct sequel. It picks up right where that game left off. Um, I found the motion in that game because um, if you remember it from Echo Arena, at least there that floating through the world, it felt faster. Yeah. So I didn't get as sick. This one, you move a lot. slower slower and mm. I just like I had to stop the demo like I thought yeah. it was gonna hurl everywhere I was like I just can't I'm sorry I can't <laughs> I'm not, play I'm not great with moving either but for yeah. some reason playing Echo Arena I was totally fine yeah I have no idea why it was yeah really it's, it's weird how sometimes certain yeah. games it, a lot of that also has to do with if the frame rate is yeah. optimized for the headset or not little things like that you don't necessarily notice if you're playing on a on a flat screen but in virtual reality if the frame rate isn't optimized it can really affect mm -hmm. your motion sensitivity and then Asgard's Wrath was wow what a surprise how absolutely gorgeous this game looks oh, wow. in virtual reality on the Rift S um, so this game um is a action RPG set in the world of, of Asgard, so of Norse mythology, all the characters you remember from Thor um, and from God of War. Kevin, uh, we should try to copyright Asgard. Everything's Marvel now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, yeah, good luck, good we luck with that. We could make a lot of money on it. Um, let me pull up my notes here. So uh, you get to play as a variety of Nordic heroes, like Loki is one of the uh, people you get to play as. And there's large instances in the, in the open world setting of Asgard that you get to play as. And they have this cool mechanic 
mechanic where it goes from being first person on the ground. You get come across these totems in the world where you go into God mode, where you pull way back in the world and it's like a fixed camera. You can kind of look around in the level hmm. to help you solve puzzles or figure out like which part of the level you need to traverse to to move on to the next section. And um, there's I go into great detail about the fun time I had in my game, including finding a humanoid shark as my travel hmm. companion. Um, so if you guys want to learn more about that, I do encourage you to check out um, this week's episode of What's Good because we have a couple more things I want to get to. Wow, it's a 30-hour game. 30 to 40-hour oh gameplay experience. Wow. Yeah, full RPG in VR. And and like I said, because it's on Rift S, like, the graphics looked fantastic. Yeah, it really looks really did a fan, good. Really did a good really job good. with this. And they have this really badass, like, uh, lady viking you can play as um anyway i also wanted to talk fran about your power per hour grind oh, really? of destiny 2 oh man or do you, would you prefer to talk about operation dark hours instead yeah it's a tough call i mean i could talk about yeah because you know i've been playing both division 2 and destiny like that's a good idea so maybe uh, we talk think, about dark hours yeah i think probably talking about the raid because we haven't got to talk about it on the show since uh, yeah we talked about Greg's it a little here, bit on but games daily but not much on it, yeah um, so yeah, like you, just like Gre your team, just like Greg and myself and um, a number of other kind of funny clan members went out last Thursday, sorry, Friday, Friday. night and got into the raid and uh, everything seemed fine at first, you know, and we clear the beginning of it and famous last be words. spoilers, but then you get into the first <laughs> boss room and most everybody knows this by now. It, it was brutal. <gasps> We've been talking about it on uh, Games Daily and stuff, but they have a big problem that consoles because of the frame rate and the accuracy of what you can do with the controller and a bunch of things, how much detail there is in an animation, a weak point in your chance to actually aim at those weak points. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's been totally optimized and built around PC and that performance and uh, console Those sirens players. are on our end. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I also want to take this opportunity, there may be some light spoilers for the raid, if that's something that you're trying to go into blind, I, just it's just your uh, light are you gonna just say spoiler something? warning. Okay. I mean, like, I'm going to talk about, like, the boss's name and okay. like the mechanics and stuff. So. It's very minor is what I'd say. We, yeah, we because we haven't got, to. at least I haven't gotten past the first yeah. encounter, well, so. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't spoil maybe how to beat him if that's what, or do you? Oh, I mean. Exactly, so it won't matter. I mean, like it's a division boss. It's yeah, you a, shoot you him. You take down his but armor there are and mechanics. then you shoot him. We won't go, we won't go, but there are mechanics. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's a good point. I would actually say you, you don't have to worry about spoilers as long as we don't go into how to get, you know, to him and, and weaken him. But anyway, long story short. We have this big problem. Uh, not many people have beaten the raid, um, in particular on console. People are beating it now, but it took some 36 hours versus like five hours for the first clear on PC. And then uh, how long, how fast has it gotten to on PC, you it's said? It's down to, I think, 23 or 24 minutes is the speed run to... for PC. And then I think the fastest console clear is three hours. Yeah, so that's the difference we're dealing with here. I mean, they're both skilled players, uh, teams, you know, that know how to do their build outs. And so I'm, I'm disappointed with that. Um, I went in pretty excited in the beginning, just sort of was a bunch of enemies and I'm like, okay, but I feel, yeah, I did a good build. I felt good. We had an old team and it felt good. It felt big. And then you get in this room and it's got some mechanics to it. So that was interesting. I kind of expected it, I guess. It wasn't like a weird puzzle or anything. It's just sort of how you- It was super puzzle light. It's a little Destiny-esque, I would say, in some ways. I think they've caught some things. I think Destiny is way more intricate with their puzzles. It is, but it did, like, frankly, it pulled a little bit from uh, some mechanics in Wrath of the Machine. I mean, it could be coincidence, but um, whatever the case, got in there, there are mechanics. I like that, and I was feeling pretty good, but then you face this boss, Boomer, and uh, was just doing, like, no damage. Like a team of eight people, like trying to crush, him. and he would like you knock him down. He gets up within like seconds. Yeah, it and just his, wasn't fun. And, and the the AOE for his melee attack is oh my gosh. is gigantic. So he's <laughs> got this like almost looks like a mini gun, yeah. but not quite. But it is like he's a like Gatling gun a big, style yeah. uh, weapon. Vulcan Raven. And what he does <laughs> is, if you get too close to him, and by too close, I mean if you're halfway across the room from him, <laughs> he'll he'll like punch it's it pretty forward unforgiving. and and hit he, you with it. Yeah. And, and one of the whole mechanics is you have to kite him around the room and it's really challenging if it's your role, if it's your turn to, to kite him around the room in order to get to the DPS phase because like the the, the, sprint, the sprint mechanic in the Division 2 is not great, right? right? But 
somehow, despite the immense amount of armor and this gigantic weapon that Boomer is wearing and, and holding, he runs hella fast. No, I've, yeah, 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 I was watching some of your stream, and I was like, I, I thought he was just like a random baddie. And I was like, why is this guy so fast? He's yeah. the most athletic man I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it's unrealistic. And that's a problem in the Division 2 at large that a lot of their elites that are really heavily armored like that are incredibly nimble. Mm -hmm. Like they're doing these spin moves and then they're rolling over uh, tabletops. They're jumping down from high ledges without breaking a sweat. I'm like, your kneecaps would be broken like in all of that tusks, armor. They got the best of the best, you know? They got <laughs> yeah. the best of the best. Um, but yeah, it wasn't what I expected, and right. I don't know what's to come, uh, how many more bosses. Uh, I don't really want to know the exact details. So I, I do want to do it on my own with obviously a team, seven more people. But man, like I had to go back and try to redo a build because I realized I was like, what You're I had. You're yourself like, now. What's that? Now you're no, doubting yourself. No, I wasn't yourself. doubting myself. Oh, okay. I just had like, base, uh, you know, you can build so many ways in Division Two. Right. I mean, and I was skill, heavy skill, tons of uh, healing items. Like I could heal like crazy. I had like eleven of these chem launcher tank. I I could heal everybody and myself, and it'd be no problem. Plus, I just had tons of skill, so I had all these cool mods on my abilities. But and I actually had an amazing LMG loadout. But for a DPS. You know what I needed to do v within seconds. Mm -hmm. That was the game breaker where that build doesn't work. But also too, just with my health and armor was not great. But I had all the healing and I thought it'd be fine. But not the way this works. Yeah. So the frustrating part so. about the raid that we were talking a little bit about on Games Daily and uh, this week was is that the way that they designed at least the first encounter. I can't speak to the subsequent encounters. Is that you really can't use your skills at all. Your skills are virtually worthless. Everybody has to run like healing chem launcher and then maybe like Hive Revive or like the... Yeah, um, you mean offensive skills. Like yeah, the, there's not... The, the, the fixer, are useless the fixer and drone. All the um, essentially because if you put a turret down, it it uh, is a target for Boomer. Just like most of the elites in the world, if they see a, tur a turret, they auto-target the turret and will smash Step it instantly. It. Um. And then you have to wait for the, the refresh. And the really tough part about what Fran was talking about with skill power is in order to really utilize a lot of these high-end mods, your skill power yeah, has, has to be, be really through the high. roof. So when you're you're specking for skill power, you most of the time you're sacrificing weapon damage, you're sacrificing critical hit and critical chance, and you're sacrificing uh, potential uh, elite damage buffs as well. And mm -hmm. so it's really like you have to make an incredibly specific build just for this encounter. And yeah. I don't know how it works for the subsequent encounters, but it's like, what's the... I don't know if I find it fun to have to min-max a separate loadout for each encounter of the boss, knowing that it's really difficult to get the buffs that you need because of the way the RNG works in the loot system of the Division Two. Yeah, it's it's like. Are they, uh, is there any word of them tuning this? No, they. So this, that was the story today. Yeah. Go ahead, and give them the yeah, bad they, news. Yeah, they had said the over the news. weekend. Reddit sort of blew up and it's like, what is going on? It's so much harder on console and it's so difficult. And then one of the UB. Um, uh, forum folks that was on Reddit, I think, works at Massive. It was like, yeah, you know, we're we're open to changes. It sounded like that meant, okay, they're discussing it. And sure enough, we show up to the State of Play, which went out yesterday. That's our weekly show for mm -hmm. Division 2 that Ubisoft does. And uh, the, the community developer confirmed, he's like, no, there's no changes coming. Like, yes, we're open to it, but this is it right now. So get in there, change your builds. And he didn't say it like that, but that was pretty much where you're at is like, they're gonna see where this goes, mm -hmm. but it's to Andrew's point. It's like, but I, I wonder actually, what the completion rate is. Like, that's what I want. Yeah, know. that's because what like, I want to know. Because you can I, tell me that like console takes three hours yeah. more than the than PC yeah, people or whatever. Are but doing it now. That's how, all they have to say. How many, how people, many people on people? PC have completed it compared to console? Those are the numbers I yeah. want. How many people tried? How many people out of the active player base are Gave raiding? Up. <laughs> well, yeah, well that too. But like in Destiny, we knew the number. Usually people who raid in a giant group that's hard to get together was 10 to 15% of the entire population. You already know it's gonna be small. Right. But I'm really wondering what that number looks like for this one right now. Same, and I think the really challenging part is we know raids are supposed to be tough. Yeah. I'm not complaining that the raid is hard. No, absolutely not. The, the frustration is that there's very much a difference between the way that the DPS is handled for the boss encounters and how PC has a clear advantage from an input controls perspective than console players do. Not only that, it's difficult to get 
eight people yeah. into a raid that all have their builds optimized the exact way it needs to if one, you're not in a clan or two, if you're potentially with people that are in your clan that just have not been able to get the drops that they yeah. need in order to optimize their builds. And so, like, yeah, we should be able to, you should be able to go out and grind. It just felt like we spent like six hours at that first encounter and had like nothing yeah, to show for it when we left. Got nowhere. Like didn't get any drops at all of any kind, not even like consumables no, yeah. and like yeah, there's like already... no loot boxes like to get materials or anything. Yeah. So it's like, did I just waste these six hours when I could have been doing encounters in the regular open world that maybe would have dropped some yeah. loot, you know? I mean, you didn't know then and that happens with No, of with course raids, not. But, but like it, it was just the... a frustrating thing and like I don't know when I'm going to go back to the raid because that means I need to get seven it's other- It's hard to organize. Yeah, I need to get seven other people that have min max their builds specifically for the raid. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when's, when's that going to yeah, happen? I mean, I'm committed to doing it. It's just going to take so much time. Like you're saying, I would like to find a team that can go in at the times I need and stick with it. It's mm -hmm. so hard to keep eight people together, let alone keep going back with them. But, um, well, and like, I think the frustrating part for me, Fran, is it doesn't need to be eight people. The only reason it feels at least so far that it needs to be eight people is because you need that many people doing DPS. And it's like, in Destiny at least, you understood why it needed to be six because there were specific encounters, at least in the beginning. Obviously, we have, we've have we had plenty of people who were like solo driven or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah two like, people over here. But like, yeah, 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 it's like this well. person has to pull this lever <clears throat> while this person's doing this over here and these two people need to step on these plates or what, yeah. right? But like, it doesn't feel like there's any mechanic like that at play in the raid that I've seen so far. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I, I don't know that it was necessary. Maybe this comes into play later. Like actually the first outside area was a big, big area that you had to control. And so eight people working a very big area made a lot of sense. That's why I was like, oh, it's like big. Right, but like then, if you're just making the no, map bigger so you can have eight people in the raid, it's I like, was, but why? No, totally, but that's right. you go inside. <laughs> that seems challenge, that's enough of a challenge yeah, you to go have inside, that many people. <laughs> yeah, you go inside this next room and it is very small. Like in theory though, some people are on ad control, but you all have to get together to do this DPS phase is very difficult. But I would I would take a step back and ask, and I think this is what we've touched on a little bit, but like, is it fun though? Like that's, it, mm -hmm. it's the simple thing. It's like, one, is it fun? But two, it's an adjustment for, especially I think players like us, for Destiny players, it's like, normally you would encounter something like that, and maybe mm -hmm. we even play it for eight hours, but you get a few rooms in, uh, you step back and you're like, man, yeah, you know what, I should have used um, I was using Whisper, so I should have used Wardcliffe, and you know what, instead of this subclass, I should have used that subclass. Mm -hmm. But there was other options. Right. I'm feeling very much that it's like, one, there's not many other options for your builds. So like you probably need a super high DPS AR and who or knows? Or LMG. All the speedrunners yeah. that I've seen are using LMGs. It's funny that, oh, that's good Kevin, to hear. Kevin, LMG, I LMG machine but, gun. Uh, I don't have a build for that, which leads me to my next that's point. That's my favorite kind of AR, gun. It's funny rifle. that my build is LMG and I'm like, whatever. I don't have enough What's DPS out of it. Assault, Assault rifle? rifle. Accelerated reader. But... What it, DPS damage per second. <laughs> but the problem that you start to realize, and this seems to be what you'd be saying though, is that... Yeah, you're not just gonna like go back to your vault and you know grab the LMG, Andrea. Um, you know what? Do you have that uh, Gilligar? Just equip that. It doesn't work that way. Do you have an LMG with these stats that you've infused up? That is the highest power. Do you have the Gilligar with these stats that you've infused? And do you have three pieces of that and armor set to, to get activate all of the this stat other buffs? perk? Yeah. Have you now got your elite damage over ninety percent? But also, do you have your crit hit chance? Of it? it is such a spreadsheet. And do you have game. seven other people that are like that? Exactly. <laughs> and do you have so, so I would at least. <laughs> point out though I appreciate that is a different kind of game it's very tactical and strategic but what happens on the fun side is you do all this there's none of it and I've already <laughs> played for 120 hours and like I just don't have those things so guess what I'm going back to the world and grinding and and I mean it's just it's going to take a lot of time and it's a weird feeling that it's just sitting there and what I find is raids kind of start to pass you by. And what I don't want to have happen, it's the biggest thing I complain the most with raids, is I want to do it blind. That's why I'm so always sensitive to spoilers and stuff. Like, I want to do it on my own. So, one, I want to get together with a group that's on the same level. But sometimes you play with that group and they start moving on and doing their own thing. And they'll come back and help you. I right. don't want your help. I mean, if I have to have just your help, okay, now I need you to be quiet. But then what you do is you go to LFGs and Discord and you're like, I'm trying to get groups together that are random. And you might be like, hey, can we do this blind? And they're like, yeah, but then next thing you know, somebody's blurting stuff out. And dude, the last boss has an X, Y, Z. You're like, ugh. <laughs> and so you miss a moment in time. 
and that always bothers me because I want to be a part of this experience. And now there's teams that manage to have the right builds and and uh, we're dedicated enough to be fair to get the stuff and have people in their network to do it. But I feel left out um, potentially. So far, so good. It's blind. I'll go back in and we'll see. But I did use um, Division Two as a pretty good Discord an official one that you can get into and use for matchmaking on all mm. platforms. You should try to use it. But I did that and it was uh, it was kind of funny. I was doing it on stream and it was interesting to say the least. Mm. Um, but it was still kind of fun, but we didn't make it that much farther. And everybody knew how to do it at that point. Like you're saying, new builds, yeah. new people. Hard to communicate with that team though. And that's what I was getting at before. It's like, if we stayed together and kept rehearsing for days, mm -hmm. we probably could do it, but I'm never gonna see these people again, so I gotta start over. But when Greg gets back from Florida, maybe. <sighs> well. Yeah. One last thing. Uh, we talked about this kind of at length on the Game Over, on a, you on got, a kind of unconscious. You got five minutes. The God of War documentary is fantastic. <laughs> Raising Kratos is so good I've on heard YouTube. i that it's a tearjerker. It is, oh my gosh, I teared up nonstop. It's, it's a beautiful video. It, it's so well done. It shows the how difficult it is to make a game, not only just any game, one of the best games of all time. And uh, I, it's so good. The There's a lot of chill moments, a lot of goosebumps. You see how tough it can be uh, being in game development. Uh, so that's a lesson to all of you uh, budding game developers. It's not easy. Shit's not easy. Where do you watch this? Uh, YouTube. It's free. Yeah, it's just on Sony's oh. Play PlayStation yeah. YouTube channel. Yeah. It's, it's two hours. Right. It's fucking great. Dang, I would like but to it watch it on my flight, sure but it's on YouTube. I wonder if I can. YouTube Premium uh, uh, free trial. You can download it. On if you have cool, YouTube Red, thanks. you can download it. That would be smart, yeah. Oh, excellent. They don't call it YouTube so Red time. anymore because that sounds like a porn type. Oh, it's YouTube Premium. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you this has com. been a fun episode of the Kind of Funny Games cast. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, if you guys want to watch the live pre-show and post-show, head to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames and get in on that membership action. Thanks again to our Patreon producers. You guys can also hit subscribe at youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and on your favorite podcast service, wherever you are in the world. Around. The globe. The globe. God, you all missed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See you next time.